No matter how many years a couple has lived together, and how happy the marriage was, in divorce, often, spouses do not manage to maintain a warm or at least respectful relationship. But sometimes former husband and wife part real enemies. Once close, people deliberately poison each other's lives, in every possible way harm or wish for death. In rare cases, the case is not limited to just wishes, and comes to a real physical reprisal. Today we will consider just such a case. To begin with, we note that in the case of the murder of a 33-year-old employee of the company Microsoft, and father of four young children, Jared Brigan to this day has not put the final point. At the moment, three people have been arrested on charges of criminal conspiracy to organize an ambush and subsequent massacre of the man. Two of them face the ultimate penalty of death. This high-profile story, which unfolded in the sunny state of Florida, has shaken, without exaggeration, the whole country, and its defendants were parents of many children who were previously linked by marriage ties. The motive of the crime is frighteningly banal. Unwillingness to share jointly acquired property and custody of common heirs. But the very approach to the murder reminds us of an intricately woven detective story. Let us trace how former spouses and very religious people became bitter enemies, and why everything ended in murder. Who was Jared Brigan? Jared J. Brigan was born in 1989 in Florida, in a simple family, where he was the second of two sons. He grew up with his own older brother Adam, with whom they were practically inseparable from childhood. The brother's parents were members of the Church of Jesus Christ Church of Latter-day Saints, and were very devout people. As a teenager in the church, the young man met a girl, whose name was Mallory Bowden. The guys started a romantic relationship, and Bowden even later called Jared her first great love, but they never got married, and cohabitation was not encouraged by their religious community. Therefore, when in 2007 the young man graduated from the School of Arts in Florida and decided to continue his studies in another state, they parted. The guy moved to Utah for a few years, where he went to college, meeting his future first wife. In 2009, at the age of 20, at a friend's birthday party, Jared met a girl named Shanna Gardner. She was two years older than him and came from a fairly wealthy family. And she was also a member of the already mentioned Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Shanna was born in 1987, and her parents, Starling and Shelley Gardner, were co-founders of a large company, Stampin' Up!, specializing in the production and sale of arts and crafts. By 2010, their family company, headquartered in Salt Lake City, reportedly reached annual revenues of $100 million. Shauna has a sibling named Sarah, who now holds one of the top positions in the family company. Being the heiress of such a wealthy family, Shauna from an early age lived in wealth and did not know the refusal of literally anything. She received training as a chef, but in the end, never worked anywhere, preferring to lead an idle lifestyle. The girl was characterized as a passionate and very fickle nature. According to the previously mentioned Mallory, at first Jared was not too interested in the new acquaintance, but the girl tried in every way to seduce him with her luxurious lifestyle, hinting that together they can travel the world and do what they like, because her parents will support them financially. Family Life and the Birth of Twins A few months after meeting, the couple got engaged, and in early 2010, less than a year after their first meeting, they had a lavish wedding in a temple in Salt Lake City, Utah, with all expenses for the ceremony and banquet covered by the Gardner family. Such a rush to consummate the marriage was due to the couple's religious views. As noted, the church censured cohabitation and did not approve of long engagements. After the wedding, the newlyweds settled in Utah, where the parents of the bride helped them to buy a comfortable house worth about a million dollars. Also, each of the spouses had their own Mercedes, although Jared at that time was still a student and Shauna did not work at all. The couple traveled a lot around the world, and in their social networks they published numerous pictures of exciting trips, expensive purchases, and entertainment. According to those close to them, the girl's parents gave the couple about $10,000 a month for various needs, and also the daughter and son-in-law had free access to their accounts. Moreover, after the guy defended his diploma, the mother-in-law and father-in-law gave him $100,000 free of charge to open his own business. In 2013, the couple had twins, daughter Abigail and son Liam. 
For a while, the family moved to Connecticut, but soon the son was diagnosed with a heart condition and lung problems. Doctors advised the parents to move closer to the sea, noting that it would favorably affect the child's health. The Bragans moved to Florida, where they bought their own two-story comfortable house, settling almost near the shoreline on the beach of Pontevedra, south of Jacksonville. Shauna at the time was active on her own social media blog, where she positioned herself as a loving wife, a caring mom of twins, a professional chef, and a girl passionate about travel and sports. She really got serious about fitness and attended the gym almost daily. Seeing this, Jared decided to make his beloved a gift and hired a personal trainer for her. Scandalous Divorce Soon after the move and the marriage, there were obvious problems, although the spouses themselves stubbornly pretended that everything was in order. Shauna was disappointed in religion and almost stopped attending church, while her husband remained devout and exemplary parishioner. On this ground, the spouses began to quarrel. There was a misunderstanding and some tension. They say that the girl was disappointed in the chosen one, who, in her opinion, was too lazy, gained excess weight, and still sluggishly trying to move his business from a dead point. Jared, having completed online courses in programming and design, was hired by Microsoft and finally began to earn money on his own, and a few years later even served as a senior manager. Nevertheless, the couple became increasingly distant from each other, and quarrels in their home became something commonplace. The situation in the family heated up when the man accidentally discovered an intimate correspondence of his wife with her personal fitness trainer. According to some reports, Shauna had an affair on the side, which in a phone conversation to her husband confirmed, and the coach himself, but the girl denied it in every possible way. At the same time, Jared wrote an email to Mallory Bowden, in which he complained that his wife was very distant from him and emotionally attached to his personal trainer at the gym. Nevertheless, he was willing to forgive her infidelity and keep the family together for the sake of the children. In 2015, after almost six years of family life, began a complex and scandalous divorce process. The spouses shared the property acquired in the marriage, as well as the right of custody of the children, and to call their separation peaceful is not at all possible. Jared publicly accused his ex-wife of cheating, which she categorically denied, claiming that there was simply no love left in the marriage. In response to these statements, the woman accused her ex-husband of cruelty and abusive behavior. Shauna did not want to share the house, cars, and available funds in their accounts because almost everything they have over the years bought or given to them by her parents. Jared himself had gotten a job less than a year ago, and before that he had only studied and unsuccessfully tried to build his business with the money given by his father-in-law and mother-in-law. The man was not in agreement with this arrangement and claimed at least half of their house in Florida. There was also quite a bit of controversy over the custody of the twins. Shauna claimed that the ex-spouse, whenever he was with the children, tried to turn them against her. He told them what to say to their mother and then recorded their words on a tape recorder to later provide these audio recordings in court. Jared, in response, accused his ex-wife of total surveillance of him, allegedly installing hidden video cameras in their home, listening to his phone calls, and putting a sensor in his car to track all of his movements. Shauna demanded sole custody of the children and sole ownership of their home by the sea. She also talked about Jared threatening to take all the money from their children's trust funds for his own use. The man, in turn, claimed that his ex-spouse evaded taxes by unofficially moonlighting at his parents' company and receiving tens of thousands of dollars there. New families but old litigation. Near the end of 2015, the court awarded joint custody of the children. But the disputes and litigation between the spouses did not end there. Even after they formalized their divorce, Jared and Shanna continued to meet regularly at the courthouse for nearly seven more years until the tragic outcome of the case. By then, they each had a new family and children. In 2016, Jared met a girl named Christina, who was also a Microsoft employee, but lived and worked in the state of North Carolina. At first, they communicated exclusively on work, but gradually became closer. And a few months later, the girl moved to Florida to her lover. In the fall of 2017, the couple played a wedding. In February 2019, their first common child was born a daughter Bexley, and in August 2021 their son was born, who was given the name London. Shana also remarried in 2018 to a man named Mario Fernandez, 
he was a year younger than her, and had his own real estate business. That same year, the couple had a son, Michael, together. The family lived in the very house in which the woman had previously lived with her first husband, and for which they now fiercely fought in court. With the appearance of other families, the ex-spouses did not calm down, and continued to regularly file lawsuits against each other with new demands. In particular, Jared insisted that Shanna's current husband could not be with the twins if the mother was absent for any reason. At the same time, he insisted that his new wife be fully involved in the lives of the older children, taking part in their upbringing. The last time the former spouses met in court was four months before Jared's death, and the meeting was extremely tense. They exchanged another batch of mutual accusations, as well as disputed rights to movable property. Shauna claimed that her ex-husband prevented her from using the larger of the family cars, which is more comfortable for transporting the children, because he cares more about humiliating the mother than he does about the comfort and safety of his own children. At this point, the court secured the woman's exclusive right to use the larger car and ordered Jared to pay her $600 in compensation. Murder on a deserted road. Under the arrangement between the former spouses, Jared would pick up the twins on Wednesdays and have a family dinner with them and their younger sister, Bexley. Sometimes Christina would join them, but after London was born, she spent almost all of her time with the youngest child, not trusting her nannies. On Wednesday, February 22nd, 2022, the man picked up the children as usual and took them to a cafe on the coast. After dinner and a walk, Jared took the twins back to his ex-wife and then went home by the usual route. The drive usually took about 40 minutes and part of the way through a rather secluded and deserted stretch of road that didn't even have lights. It was at this point that Brygan encountered a sudden obstacle. The man was driving slowly and carefully because his three-year-old daughter was in a child seat in the back seat. It was about 9 p.m. and the sun had already set when suddenly in the headlights he saw a car wheel lying in the middle of his lane. He stopped, turned on his emergency lights, and got out of his car to move the obstruction off the road to the side of the road. At that moment, shots rang out. Jared had no chance of escape. The murderer had acted for sure and fired several bullets at close range before fleeing. The child snoozing in the car was unharmed. A passerby who was nearby heard the shots and cautiously went in that direction. When he saw the man lying in a pool of blood, he called the police and medics, but unfortunately, the victim could not be helped. Investigation and First Assumptions Christina called her husband just a couple of minutes before the incident, and he said that he had already taken the children and himself would be home in about 15 minutes. But half an hour passed, then an hour, and Jared still did not appear and stopped answering the phone. When the concerned woman dialed his number again, a police officer answered and told her what had happened, asking her to come to the Jacksonville Beach Police Station immediately. A team working at the scene determined that a wheel obstruction in the road was what caused the car to stop. The investigation concluded that the man left the vehicle to remove the obstruction, but was shot and killed. His young daughter remained unharmed, meaning she was not the target of the mystery shooter. Also, no valuables were missing from the cabin. There was a wallet with cash, a phone, and a tablet. Therefore, the robbery version was cancelled almost immediately. When Christina was asked if her husband had any obvious enemies, ill-wishers, or perhaps he had had a conflict with someone recently, the woman said that she did not know anyone who could wish harm to her husband, except for his first wife Shana. However, she wouldn't say anything for sure, noting only that she couldn't accuse anyone directly without hard evidence. The police said that there was no surveillance footage, due to the absence of any on the stretch of road where the murder took place. A bystander who heard the gunshot claimed that the sound was heard in complete silence and was not preceded by the squeal of brakes, loud shouts, or any other sounds. It is true that afterwards he heard the noise of the wheels of a car driving away quickly, but he could not see anything in the darkness. Christina's version of Shana's involvement in the crime seemed very plausible. However, the detectives realized that the woman would not have done it herself, Besides, at the time of the murder she had an ironclad alibi, because she was at home with her husband, twins, youngest son, and her parents, who came to visit them. The police then decided to check the footage from the nearest CCTV cameras in the area. The check revealed that about a quarter of an hour before the incident, 
an older dark blue Ford F-150 with brown trim had entered the area. The vehicle in question was again in camera view, a couple minutes after gunshots were heard, according to a witness. Detectives immediately sought the public's assistance in identifying the vehicle of interest. The victim's loved ones made statements from television screens, asking for any trivia that could at least theoretically relate to the case. The first defendant Shana and her current husband Mario were repeatedly summoned for questioning, but they categorically denied their involvement in the murder. The woman did not hide the fact that she and her ex-husband had a difficult relationship, but claimed that she would never wish evil on the father of her children. She also told the media how the nine-year-old twins reacted to the news of their father's death. According to her, Abigail sobbed uncontrollably for hours on end, while Liam was in a stupor and remained silent for a long time. However, it should be added that neither the ex-spouse nor the older children were not at Jared's funeral. The whole thing is that Christina told Shana that her presence at the farewell ceremony is highly undesirable, to which the woman replied that if she was not allowed to be there, then the twins at the funeral will not be either. It wasn't until January 2023, almost a year after Mr. Brigan's murder, that the first defendant in the case was arrested. The police have remained silent all this time as to how the investigation was progressing, noting only that a great deal of energy and resources were involved. Indeed, all this time there was a thorough search for the dark blue Ford F-150, and finally Lux smiled on the investigation when the car was involved in an accident, but left the scene before the police arrived. This time the case was in a crowded place, with many witnesses, and the incident was captured by several cameras, so the offender was tracked down the same day. The owner of the vehicle was a 62-year-old unemployed and previously convicted African-American man named Henry Tenen. The man was charged with second-degree premeditated murder with a firearm, participating in a criminal conspiracy to take a person's life, and setting up an ambush with an obstruction of the victim. This was personally announced by Jacksonville Beach Police Chief Jonathan Paul Smith and City Attorney Melissa Nelson during a press conference. At that time, it was also revealed that the arrested Henry Tenen was not acting alone and is already testifying against his accomplices, but no one else's names were released. The information was withheld in the interests of the investigation. Nevertheless, the defendant, realizing that he faces a huge sentence on the aggregate of charges, decided to make a deal with law enforcers so that his help and assistance would count against him at sentencing and help minimize the punishment. Criminal Trio It was soon leaked to the press that defendant Tenen had recently been renting a small house owned by Mario Fernandez with a buddy. Henry's housemate was also called to the station for questioning, but the man was unable to provide any useful information about the case. He had not even been in personal contact with the owner of their rental home, but had simply passed his portion of the rent through Henry. Nevertheless, when the house was thoroughly searched, a hidden gun was found in the defendant's room, which according to ballistics, was the weapon of the crime. This proved once again that Tenen had a direct connection with the murder. On March 16, 2023, Mario Fernandez was arrested after Tenen officially pleaded guilty and agreed to testify against Mario whom he called the ordering officer. He was charged with first-degree murder, criminal conspiracy, and solicitation to commit a felony. At the same time, rumors spread that the main initiator of the murder was Shanna. In particular, this was said by her former lover, a fitness trainer, to whom she complained about the fact that she had not loved her then-husband for a long time and wished him dead. Also testifying was a tattoo artist from the salon where the woman got tattoos. According to her, Shauna said she was tired of litigating with her ex-spouse and wanted to shut him up for good, and afterward asked if she knew anyone who could help with that. It initially sounded like a mean joke, but a couple months later the woman repeated her question, at which point it was obvious she was being serious. Shauna Gardner Fernandez vehemently denied all allegations and suspicions against her. She said she would stay in town and help the investigation in any way she could, but a couple months after her husband's arrest, she took the twins, her youngest son, and moved to Washington, D.C. However, on August 17, 2023, she was charged with the same counts as her current husband. The woman was arrested in her metropolitan apartment and sent to Florida, where the entire criminal trio will be tried. Her motives for her actions include a complicated relationship with her ex-spouse, an unwillingness to share custody of their two joint children, 
and a desire for sole possession of all disputed movable and immovable property. Litigation. At this point, the case has not yet been closed, and the trials of all parties to the conspiracy are ongoing. Tenen pleaded guilty on all counts, is actively cooperating with the investigation, and hopes for leniency. According to some reports, he faces at least 15 years in prison, which is an impressive, if not life, sentence for a man of such advanced age. Mario Fernandez pleaded guilty only partially, and, exercising his legal right, refused to testify against his wife. But Shauna Gardner Fernandez categorically denies all charges against her. Nevertheless, as it became known, prosecutors are seeking for the spouses the capital punishment of death or life imprisonment without the right to ever be released on parole. Shauna's three children are now in the care of her maternal grandparents, Starling and Shelley Gardner, and her aunt Sarah, 